Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Well, I've got a new little toy to show you. So over the weekend, I have installed my new stove. Here's my new cast iron stove. So obviously I've ripped out the other Newport one because it just did not handle coal at all. So, um, and yeah, um, with this new cast iron one now, I've already tested it out. Um, I have been, um, seasoning it uh so I start off with a bit of wood because you're supposed to heat it up slowly and get it used to getting you know hotter and hotter and hotter you can't just chuck in a you know a whole bunch of coal in there and expect it to um to work properly because it could actually crack it um so but I did actually this morning I woke up at about two o'clock uh 2 a.m uh that's what I normally do <laughs> I know it's weird but I wake up at um yeah 2 a.m have breakfast, have coffee, and then go back to bed. And in this case, I lit a fire at about 2 a.m. and put some little um, um, bit of charcoal on there. Uh, so what I do is I smash up um, like the larger briquettes into small little ones, little pieces. So I put it about four briquettes worth um, in there and just burn it really, really slowly. And the heat coming off that was absolutely amazing. It it kept the boat warm at around 23 degrees. So after I had breakfast, went back to bed, um, got up, you know, five, six hours later and to a lovely, toasty warm boat. It was just fantastic. Um, so anyway, so we're back to the stove, right? So um, <clears throat> the stove's mounted on a concrete slab. It's 50 millimeters thick, 600 by 600 uh, wide. Uh, and then mounted on two concrete uh, building bricks. Um, so the slab was about 12 quid. The building bricks were about four quid each. I did actually buy four of those, but I only needed two. Um, so I'll just use the other two for extra ballast. Um, all the distances required to the fireboards, the silicate boards, are within the tolerance as per that um, stove installation document that seems to circulate around the boating community um so you know proper air gaps behind proper air gap um uh to the side there and also in front i may actually put um may actually just get some bricks or something and make a high lip around there as well just as an extra precaution uh to stop any bits of coal or wood you know if they do drop out when i open the door um <clears throat> I've also, thanks to my friend Mark um, from Great Hayward. Hi, Mark. Thanks for this tip. Um, so he recommended I get some fire bricks. This is what their fire bricks look like. Just to make the chamber a little bit smaller. Because it's still, you know, it's a rated at five and a half kilowatts, this stove. But I just, I really don't think I'm going to need it. So I've chucked a few of these in to make the chamber much smaller. Um, and it's worked brilliantly. Um, it helps retain the heat as well. Um, and just means I'll be able to burn a, a much smaller fire. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, I've got, um, these are calcium silica boards, 25 millimeter um, thick boards mounted onto a wooden frame. Um, now you might be saying, oh, well, it's wood, you know, it can, the heat can penetrate the wood, etc." cetera. But, um, I'm not really going to be burning it that hot anyway. The only, I suppose, downside is this little bit of timber here. But behind where the main stove is in, re in relation to the boards, like that's 25 mils there. Plus there's a, an extra, because these are 45 mil thick. So we've got an extra 45 millimeter air gap. Plus, because it kind of sits in uh, there's the gunnels there there's the gunnels there and so there's an extra air gap behind there as well so the only real dodgy bit is probably this bit here but i'm not overly concerned with that um so yeah 25 mil silica boards these aren't the cheapest things in the world um that these panels are one meter by 60 centimeters uh and they're about 35 pounds each so not the cheapest things in the world but i've got to be safe you know um, as for the flue, currently I've got a one meter flue pipe sticking up there. Um, 
and well, I have been told I need to get at least another meter. So I've got two meters of flue, so it'll sit on top of the roof. Um, up there, I've cut in. I already had a hole cut up there, so um, for my pre for my previous stove. So it was a five inch hole. It's now a seven inch hole because my understanding is you need a one inch air gap between the flue pipe and the ceiling. Um, as you can see up there, there's a silicon flushing, uh, which I got on eBay for about 20 quid. And on top of that, I've got one of those um, circulating uh, wind vanes, cowls or whatever you call it, that you know, change, you know, changes direction according to the wind direction, etc. Um, but I will put another flue pipe on top of this one as well. Um, once I've, the only thing I've really got to do now really is secure the stove to the concrete base. Once I've done that, I'm probably going to get um, some, some of that galvanized strip, um, you know, with the holes in it that I use to um, mount my, um, my fuel tank on the boat. Um, and then just attach that to the silica boards um, so this doesn't move. Although I don't really think it's going to move that much, but just so it's more nice and secure, that's what I'm going to do. Um, as you notice, I've got one of these little eco fans as well. Um, this is kind of on its last legs because it's been dropped a few times when I've done locks and what have you. Um, although I have figured out a really cool way of attaching it. Um, so it doesn't fall over and that's just a, getting a bit of galvanized wire. Um, but I am getting a new one of these, um, which is magnetic and attaches directly to the flue. So that means I can point the fan in any direction mainly towards the front cabin so I can keep it warm um, when it gets really cold. So I think that's going to be really, um, really cool. So, but there, there you go. There's my little stove. Um, really happy with it. Like I said, turned on last night um, with a tiny little bit of coal, handful of coal, um, and it kept the boat toasty warm um, for the remainder of the morning. So five, six hours with a little bit of coal, um, and the boat was kept toasty warm at around 23 degrees so it's going to be absolutely fantastic in winter so i'm really happy with it yeah it's been it's been a um a fa fantastic diy project um learned a lot obviously about you know constructing hearths i've never done this before you know and i've never used a cast iron stove before either so i'm really thrilled really thrilled with its performance the stove itself it wasn't it wasn't expensive. It was about two hundred and fifty quid on eBay, um, and yeah, absolutely, it's going to be absolutely awesome come winter uh, when the temperatures really start getting cold. So there you go. Uh, if you've got any questions on that, please don't hesitate to send me a form um, through the website aussieboater.co.uk forward slash contact. Um, I will be publishing uh, the video on video on um, my Facebook group, which is called the Yogurt Pots which is a, a group uh, for cruiser enthusiasts. So um, if you've got any questions or queries on that, don't hesitate to sing out. Um, and yeah, we're more than happy to answer your questions. All right, guys. See you later.